Today we're going to be comparing what are probably the two most popular ultra-compact travel strollers with reversible seats on the current market, the Boogaboo Ant and the Cybex EZS Twist. Reversible seats are very appealing to parents, allowing them to help and comfort their children on the go. But when it comes to ultra-compacts, design practicalities work against this idea, because ultra-compacts must follow very tight folded size limitations in order to be accepted as cabin luggage. And the reversible seat means adding a separate seat frame rather than going with the much easier option of just suspending the seat fabrics from the handle arms. Both of these models have chosen to defy this reasoning, however, and go for the gold. Give the parents what they want, despite the intricate tricks of origami and engineering wizardry needed to accomplish this feat. And in fact, just building an ultra compact with a reversible seat wasn't even enough for the overconfident design teams at Boogaboo and Cybex. Both of these models had to take it a step further, with the Ant's chief design feature being the ability to fold down into a wheelable suitcase, or rather a fake suitcase since you can't really fit anything in it, and the twist being built such that the seat unit can swivel around from front to back like your office chair, without the need for detaching the seat frame just to reverse the seat's orientation. Let's kick off with a few stats. Both the Ant and the Twist clock in at a little over 7 kilos, with the Twist being a hair heavier, and the Ant folds down to 55 by 38 by 23 centimeters, versus 58 by 45 by 27 on the twist. Regarding weight capacity, the Ant can take a bit more, with 22 kilos in the seat versus 17 on the twist, and eight kilos in the shopping basket versus five on the twist. Note though that we are talking about very small strollers, and these capacities should really be taken more as an indication of the comparative strength between their designs, rather than what you will actually need when using them. Both with relation to the seat and the basket of both of these models, it is unlikely that you would ever get close to filling up these weight capacities. Okay, let's talk seats. Size-wise, the Twist has a higher canopy than the Ant, allowing it to accommodate an older child. And it also has seat walls, which are important for a comfortable recline so that your child's arms don't dangle out into space during nap time. Just looking at these strollers side by side, it should be clear that overall, the Ant seat is built smaller a result of its need to fold down and fit within the confines of the fake suitcase concept. But in actuality, it is larger than the twist in one key area, the depth of the baseboard. The twist's baseboard, as in what your child is actually sitting on, is shallow, four centimeters less than the ant, and built this way to accommodate the twist's own signature design concept, that handy swivel where the seat must be small enough to pass through the space allotted by the handle arms. This is less of a problem in the forward position, but in the reverse parent-facing position where there is no footrest, the ant doesn't have a rear frame footrest either, by the way, that shallower baseboard means that it will likely feel as though any child over a year or so, or at least any child whose legs have grown long enough to dangle off the seat, is slipping out of the seat, held only in place by the safety harness. In general then, when we consider the shallower baseboard on the twist, and the lack of seat walls on the ant, and the fact that neither of these models has a reverse-facing footrest, the truth is that both of these strollers will really only comfortably accommodate a child of up to a year at the most in the reverse facing, which again is probably what you're paying for. And after that, you'll need to use the forward facing, where the seats will again feel smaller earlier than on most other ultra compacts built solely to accommodate the forward facing position. Moving on to folding, we'll start with what is probably the most important difference between these two models, the folded dimensions. You see, while both of these models are sold as ultra compacts, only the Ant is really small enough to be accepted as cabin luggage by the majority of airlines, while the Twist, by contrast, is simply too large, meaning that you might be forced to check it when traveling. For me, this is pretty important, because if you have to check your stroller anyway, there are a lot of slightly larger reversible seat models that are sturdier, have bigger seats, and are better able to handle terrain that you might as well have chosen instead. As far as the actual process of folding down these two models goes, both have pretty complex folds, in particular as a result of the added mechanisms for folding down the seat units. The Ant's fold actually takes more steps, and is a bit more fiddly overall, and is also a bit more prone to asymmetry problems from the outset. But the twist, while a little easier, is built a lot weaker, especially in the actual folding mechanisms, and can often feel as though extra care is required when folding so that you won't break something. We'll explain how folding works on both of these models a lot more when we do our mechanical breakdown in a moment, and if you stick around to the end of the video, we'll also do a demonstration. When folded down, there's no really obvious inbuilt way for carrying either of these strollers. There is a travel bag for the twist, but it's a lot of work to take it in and out of the bag every time you want to fold it down. But on the Ant, you do have fake suitcase mode, where you can pull around your stroller as though it were a suitcase with an extendable handle, just in case any of you find this more useful than just pushing around your stroller.
I don't personally. Okay, a few more notes on comfort and functionality, and then we'll move on to the mechanics. Despite the disparity in weight capacities, both of these models have more or less the same size shopping basket, and both are relatively easy to access as well. The handles are also about the same height, and removing the textiles on both of these models is relatively simple, which is nice if your child spills something and you need to wash them. When it comes to driving, as with most ultra compacts, neither of these models will really work that well off of smooth terrain, like in the airport and shopping malls or well-maintained pavement. Once you get onto rougher terrain, the ant's small front wheels make negotiation difficult, while the twist, despite some effort on Cybex's part to add suspension, is hampered by loose front wheel mountings and a generally fragile chassis, and will shake a bit too much, as well as getting hung up on smaller obstacles like the ant. We'll talk more about this in a moment, but for now, let's start, our, start off our mechanical run-through by looking closer at the handles and folding mechanisms of both models. Okay, we're going to start off with the Ant, which probably has the most number of steps for folding down just about any other stroller other than maybe the GB Pocket. There are three different elements to the way it folds. One is the telescopic handle, uh, which involves essentially three separate bars that slide inside each other and a wide number of positions. So that is going to control folding that handle all the way in. And of course, you're going to use this handle if you use that trolley or fake suitcase mode uh, as well. Uh, key problems with the handle have to do with the fact that it simply has so many positions and so many bars running one inside the other. And you're going to wind up with asymmetry issues even from unpacking the stroller the first time. It's a little bit hard to get both bars to slide up and slide down simultaneously. Uh, an additional problem is because there are then so many points at which the handle is kind of separated in separate pieces, uh, it already starts out quite loose. And over time, that looseness is just going to uh, get worse as uh, each handle widens out the channel that it folds inside, okay? Uh, part two of the folding system is, of course, the seat, which is very, very complicated. It's a uh, very sort of origami style because it has those large hinges that fold in from the side, has to be pressed down, and uh, the textiles have a tendency to get in the way. And if each step isn't done in sort of the correct order, the mechanisms have like uh, maybe some sort of safety, safety elements inside and it doesn't allow you to move on to the next step. So you have to kind of remember the order and keep the textiles out of the way. Anytime you have uh, situations where parts of the unlo uh, unfolding or folding mechanisms are going to get hung up in the process, you wind up putting extra pressure on um, other points in the, in the stroller that are still locked or unlocked as you're trying to force those mechanisms to work. And over time, this will also lead to a bit of looseness. The third point of folding is uh, this part here, which is just a basic release sort of a system that folds the rear frame in against the front. It's a little bit fiddly and hard to get to lock in place sometimes, but mechanically speaking, it's actually the most solid portion of the overall folding system. Now, um, it is made by Boogaboo, and in relation to the EZS twist, all of the mechanisms and all of the components involved here are a little bit more heavy duty. So even though it is a little bit more complicated and fiddly and prone to sort of asymmetry issues as you're trying to fold it down or fold it up, um, it will take a little bit more wear from the extra pressure and shakes of trying to do those processes. Okay, looking at the EZS twist, there are fewer uh, mechanisms and points that you have to actually fold, but everything is a lot weaker. Uh, it involves these two internal systems here and here, where you have like a wire running down the inside, activating a lower mechanism. Uh, in this case, it's going to activate this mechanism, which is going to separate or uh, release the distance that is held by that mechanism between these two bars. And you have the same sort of a setup on the seat. Uh, it's going to release the joint here of these two bars. And when it does that, the rest of it, the rest of all of those hinged points on the seat and the chassis will just fold together. So the, uh, the key problem, in addition to sort of having that internal complexity, uh, of course, there's always chances things can break. The little plastic uh, points that hold the wire on both ends can break, especially as you've used the stroller for a while. And it does develop sort of asymmetries where you're going to have different amounts of uh, like tension or strength pulling on those wires and mechanisms on either side. Uh, it won't be symmetrical in the way that pressure is, right? Uh, but in addition to that, there are quite a few of these joints and small bars that are sort of holding the whole thing together. And a lot of these are riveted, and a lot of the bars themselves and the, the joints are quite weak. And the whole thing actually kind of feels kind of loose from the beginning. Um, in my opinion, if you were to use this with any sort of regularity, this stroller, 
uh, especially if you can't always hold yourself to just like linoleum or like mall tiles and stuff, which you can't, you will have to take it outside sometimes. Uh, all of those points are going to loosen so much that I would think that the thing would be very, very rickety within at least a year or two. Um, and that is if something doesn't break, because there are a lot of points here that just like a little bit of an accident or a little bit too much pressure can cause them to break, unfortunately. So uh, it is a little bit less complicated overall than the Ant in relation to its folding, but it is a lot more fragile. Uh, an additional point with this is that when it's folded all the way down, uh, this mechanism here from the handle also locks the stroller down. And um, that means that when you're lifting up the folded down stroller, if you're not careful to lift it up from like both sides and you just pick it up by one of the bars, then uh, you're putting extra weight and like, you know, gravitational pressure in a way on that mechanism, which is kind of fragile inside. And I would guess that will be one of the mechanisms that will tend to go first in a lot of cases. Okay, let's have a little bit of a closer look at the lower rear frame of both of these strollers, which I feel is actually the sturdiest part in uh, both designs. So on the side backs, you do have these larger suspension springs. They're kind of pointless in a way because you can, still can't take this thing off of uh, any sort of smooth terrain uh, because of those loose front wheels and because of the size of the wheels in general. Uh, but it does add a small amount of suspension. There is no suspension whatsoever in the rear frame of the Ant. Um, but again, you're not really going to be going over any sort of terrain that would require suspension. Uh, wheel size, the back wheels on the Ant are actually a little bit larger than they are on the twist, um, the front wheels are smaller, but the back wheels are a bit larger. Uh, the wheels are removable in both cases, so if you have any sort of trouble, you can take off the wheels and replace them, trouble with the wheels. Uh, as far as the brake systems are concerned, both of these brake systems are actually this very simple sort of a brake system where uh, the pedal is going to rotate a bar inside that is going to be responsible for shooting the pins out into teeth on the back sides of the wheels. And that's actually quite a good brake system. It's nice that they, neither one has gone for any sort of like a wire based brake system or anything that would have a lot of small components that can break. Okay, we're going to have a little bit of a closer look at the lower front frame of both of these strollers. Uh, both of the forks have a little bit of suspension in them. Again, the suspension is not super necessary, but it's nice to have a little bit. Um, again, you're going to be limited mostly to flat terrain. The front wheels on the Ant are just ridiculously too small. Uh, it's really one of the most limiting factors for drivability on the Ant. If they had gotten slightly larger front wheels on there, it would do actually a lot for the model. Of course, you still have to fix a seat, but uh, it would do a lot for the model, at least drivability wise. Um, you have, you know, more of a standard size on the twist, which is okay. Could be bigger as well, but uh, it's very standard. Same as like the Baby Zen Yo-Yo. Uh, neither of these two models have swivel locks, uh, which means you can't like lock the wheels in an inline position. And uh, both actually have removable wheels. The way that the fork connects into the front housing is a little bit better on the Ant. It, it connects in a little bit tighter. Um, than it does on the twist. And I believe that over time, you're gonna wind up with trouble, as I mentioned already, with that sort of loose uh, situation you have with that fork as it goes into the housing. This is a brand new stroller. And it's already this loose. It simply doesn't have uh, the sort of way that it locks inside. It's not built in such a way as to hold that thing tight enough in. And it really could have used some sort of extra help with that, like uh, spring-loaded pads or something to hold it in place. You don't have spring-loaded pads on the Ant, but the way the fork connects inside the housing is a little bit better. It is a little bit tighter. Um, what this means is that over time, I think you're gonna have problems with uh, wobbling when you go at a little bit faster speed on the twist as that fork, as that uh, axle on the fork starts to widen out the internal housing. Um, but I don't think you'll necessarily have those sorts of problems on the Ant. Uh, again, the problem with the Ant chiefly is the size of those front wheels. So which of these two would I recommend? If I had to choose between just these two models, then I would say go for the Ant. Despite the smaller seat and front wheels, the overall engineering is sturdier and it will probably last a bit longer. When looking at the wider market, however, my real recommendation is that you don't pick either of these models, as both are mechanically inferior to a lot of the rest of the competition, and also because virtually every ultra compact these days can fit a car seat that will work just fine for reverse facing during that crucial time up to nine months, which would be the optimal age for using the reverse position on either of these models anyway. In my opinion, the chief flaw of both the Ant and the Twist is that their manufacturers weren't satisfied with just producing reversible seat ultra compacts, but instead had to try and fly just that little bit closer to the sun. And well, we all know the story of Icarus. In any case, we hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, we ask that you subscribe as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. Thank you.